I would like to continue in our series of Unfoolish Finances. I would also like to thank God for allowing us to take some time for us to engage in a foolish celebration of our 141 years of church life here at FMBC. And with that being said, I would like you all to travel with me as we visit another church in another time. You see, early in the book of Acts, Luke brings us to the first century of the church that Jesus Christ gave his life for, fulfilling God's plan of salvation. This church in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost experienced the arrival of the promised comforter, the advocate, the blessed Holy Spirit. He was seen then as tongues of fire resting on the crowds. Then people from all over heard other nations speaking in their native tongues. Peter then spoke to the crowd and gave an account of the fulfilled prophecy of the Holy Spirit. Peter told about the Savior's road to Calvary from crucifixion through death and on to his triumphant resurrection. Now, when the crowds received this good news, about 3,000 repented and were saved. See, there in Acts, we saw a lame man walk at the temple gate called beautiful. We also learned that after receiving the teachings and preachings of John and Peter, people will say, were saved and the Holy Spirit spread throughout the community. Now these Jerusalem Christians devoted themselves to service as everyone shared their possessions and they gave to everyone who was in need. Houses and lands were sold, and the money from those sales were donated. And every day the Lord honored those offerings, and every day souls were saved. Now, as we learn about the church of the first century, we saw that caring for others was foundational. It was the basis as it occurred quite often. This level of commitment spread throughout God's people. But did this movement affect everybody on the same level? Now, as we continue our foolish journey, for a few minutes, let's focus on commitment. Let's look at some examples from this church in Jerusalem as we go all in, or nothing. So let's go to Acts, the fourth chapter, verses 36 and 37, and the fifth chapter, verses 1 to 5, and it's in the NIV. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned, and he brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? (sighs) 
didn't it, bring, didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to men, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. So, let's begin with service. Webster's Dictionary tells us that service is a helpful act, useful labor that does not produce a visible object. In verse 37, Barnabas, the word of God says, Barnabas sold the field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Joseph Barnabas, whose nickname was Son of Prophecy in Aramaic and Son of Encouragement in the Greek, he was a highly respected member of the church in Jerusalem. See, if you remember, it was Barnabas who took Paul and introduced him to the apostles. This was after Paul's Damascus Road conversion. Barnabas... Well, if you wonder how he got land that he could sell, Barnabas had family connections in Jerusalem because the mother of his cousin, Mark, you know Mark, the author of the second gospel, she had a large home and there was property on that land. And Barnabas, being family, had a piece of that land. But he took his and he sold the field that he owned just to help the poor members of the church. Barnabas, who was a committed disciple of Jesus, brought to God's people what was God's to begin with. Barnabas was also known as the son of consolation because of his passionate preaching. You see, he was very impressed with the enthusiasm of the people's giving. You see, God loves a cheerful giver, and cheerful giving can be contagious. If you spend any time in this church, you know that to be true. Verse 1 in chapter 5 says, Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. Ananias also sold land but with a different motive. His and his wife's focus was mainly for their own benefit. Their offering served as an afterthought. Instead of serving Christ in the church with the whole offering like Barnabas did, Ananias and Sapphira, they laid down the leftovers, acting like they were doing something impressive. <laughs> so we have Barnabas, who was all in. And we have Ananias and Sapphira, who I would surely say were really about nothing. But that was a first century moment. Now here's a 21st century example. A story for today's times about a body of members and friends of a church doing life together in the Logan community a group of God's people that are continuing their legacy, their long legacy of service. You see, throughout the deadly pandemic, this house faithfully ministered God's word and served God's people week after week, virtually and on campus, locally and globally. There's a branch of Zion with willing workers and loyal laborers that feed the hungry, care for the community in a house full of hope, offering help, hope, and new life to the lost and the hurting. This church has a group of dedicated brothers 
that care for the campus, greeting drivers and their passengers from the parking lots to our welcoming doors. Yes, God's people at Tournament and Chestnut offer smiles, service, and the King of Kings from the lobby to the pews, from the gateway to the youth worship center, from Noah's Ark to the next step table, and so much more. Yes, family, FNBC is an all-in church. So our foolish buy-in, number one, is a complete commitment to serve Christ and his community should be unwavering and unselfish. Next is sacrifice. Webster tells us that sacrifice means to suffer the loss of, to give up, to renounce or destroy. Get this part. Especially for a belief or to an end. See, having land back then meant you had ongoing provisions. Land produced assets, food, livestock, lumber, homes, and so on. Assets provided means for living and possible wealth. The Jerusalem church was hardly known as a church of plenty. They had widespread poverty. People were taxed beyond what they had. Good hygiene was a challenge, and crime was common. And on top of all that, Roman rulers were heartless, and Jewish leaders, they were just corrupt. Then there was Barnabas, who sold and gave what he had from that property to provide funds for the life and growth of the church and its community. See, Barnabas sacrificed his future resources and provisions, putting his trust in God. See, he threw caution to the wind, knowing that as long as he had Jesus, his needs would always be met. With morals and character that trace back to his Levitical heritage, Barnabas presented his offering with humility. He could have sent his offering in by camel or cart. Instead, he personally brought his offering and placed it at the feet of the apostles. Humility. Verse 2 in chapter 5 tells us, with his full knowledge, he, Ananias, kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. There is such a thing as acting a lie versus telling a lie. Ananias did not say the money he brought was the total profit of his land. He simply allowed men to draw this conclusion for themselves. Ananias believed his actions would have others think that he was doing exactly like Barnabas did. Ananias valued the approval from mankind unlike those who truly sacrificed everything. Instead, he was willing to enjoy the portion he kept for himself in secret. Or at least he thought it was a secret. Ananias sacrificed his foolish pride, caring less about the church and more about his reputation among men. He and his wife, surely had no respect, for, no respect or regard for the all-seeing eye of the Almighty. You see, Ananias and Sapphira put me in the mind of that couple back in the garden, questioning 
allowing the enemy to make them question what the Lord said. Just as sure as they knew what the Lord said, Ananias and Sapphira knew what the Lord was doing in that community. You see, we must always be mindful that our good works are not to be done for man's compliments. They are to be done for the benefit of others to the glory of God. So for more than 14 decades, First Missionary has given and continues to sacrificially give of our time. For we know that when everyone gives a little, no one gives a lot. From music and arts, deacon team, hospitality, board strategy, and ministerial team, we sacrificially give the talents of our collective potential. Here we focus our attention and efforts on the business of Christ, serving his community. We know that everything belongs to God and that we can't be God's giving. So we systematically and sacrificially give of our treasure. Foolish buy-in number two. A sacrificial offering is not affordable, it's not easy, and it's mostly not timely. But it is a collective outpouring of committed Christians. So we have service and we have sacrifice. So let's look at surrender. Surrender means to give up completely or agree to withhold without, to agree to withhold, especially in favor of another. Let me repeat that. Surrender is to give up completely or agree to withhold, especially in favor of another. Verse four, didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was so, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. When Barnabas a descendant of temple servants, saw the need. His spirit was stirred, and he surrendered what was necessary. See, I imagine this Levite heard the Lord's challenge of Malachi 3.10, where the Lord said, test me and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing." that there will not be room enough to store it. I imagine God's giving brought Barnabas the peace that surpassed all understanding. So Barnabas cast all his cares on Jesus. Thank you, Siri. <laughs> cast all his cares on Jesus, knowing Jesus cared for him. Yes, I can hear Barnabas, the son of encouragement, being all in as the psalmist declares, I have been young and I have been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging bread. Yes, Barnabas was all in fully committed to the Jerusalem church, knowing where his help came from, that his help came from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And that same Lord daily added to the number of believers. Satan was behind what Ananias and Sapphira did. They were guilty of jealousy, unbelief, and 
love of money. Sapphira, the wife, went along with this plan as their greedy egos grieved the Holy Spirit. Now, y'all forgive the male chauvinist in me, but Pastor, I don't think Ananias would have did it if Sapphira wouldn't have agreed. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, ta- I'm talking about my house. In my house, if mama don't agree, I don't agree. And if mama say it's okay, my head's on a swivel. I'm just saying. How we say how we do here, we keep it real. See, their selfish hearts were hardened. They lied to God, refusing to surrender themselves to the Holy Spirit. The judgment they received was immediate and severe. Because you don't get more severe than dying. By their punishment, God let the church know early in its growth that unbelief, greed, and selfishness would have no place in the kingdom. More than 2,000 years ago, Christ gave his life for generations past, present, and future. And here we have this couple just tossing it away. I guess they felt since it didn't cost them anything, that a price wasn't paid. But those of us that know the story of the risen Savior, we know differently. See, for over 140 years, this Logan Church, through Christ, has served thousands, meeting needs in a sundry of ways, addressing concerns of the minds, feeding bodies, and caring for the soul. Throughout those 140 years, only God knows the number of souls saved as they surrendered their lives to Christ. And only God gets the glory as we remain committed to be all in. And for our foolish buy-in number three, we truly become God's people when we surrender our stuff, ourselves and our stuff back to the original owner. Our bottom line today is all members of the body work together as one and gives and lives for all that Christ has done. See, we take no credit of our own. We thank God for all he has done through us and for us. Amen. 